Good evening. I'm here. Isn't that Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor has called the <laughs> workshop to order. Mayor Davey. I am here. Councilmember Kaplan. Here. Councilmember Laredo. Vice Mayor London. Councilmember McCormick. Councilmember Moss. Here. Councilmember Segarola. Here. Okay. Mr. Mayor, let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> First item, Mr. Mayor, is discussion, golf court ordinance. Correct. Um, I guess... How do we want to start this off? We want to just have sort of an overview. Um, you know, Chad, if you, do you want to give us the historical background on this? I mean, you know, I, it's funny going back over the stuff from 2009. Um, this was this was a big subject. This was handled by uh, a prior council in detail. Um, but uh, you know, if you could uh, fill us in, and move sure, on. if it's okay. No, or did you want? I mean, uh, I mean, I, or do I want to have public comment? Before we start our discussion, or it's up to you guys. Yeah, I mean, is anybody does anybody want wish to speak right now? Pete, can you do the announcement online, please? Brett, just make sure. Good evening, you... ladies and gentlemen. For those of you watching us on channel seventy-seven, channel ninety-nine, or streaming this live on our website, if you wish to speak to this. Does anybody in the room wish to speak on this issue right now? Okay. And everybody signing up. And again, this is a workshop, so if somebody pops up, if, if somebody's got a question later on, Pete, if you see them raising their hands, make sure just let me know, and we'll we'll get them involved. Okay. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, no one has signed up as of yet. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> I guess well, right, go I ahead. Just give a brief overview. Great. Of, uh, so, under <clears throat> under Florida law, um, golf carts are generally prohibited on streets. Um, in the 80s, um, there was a law put on the books that allowed cities to designate certain roads that golf carts can drive on. Um, initially, that law limited it to golf carts being allowed to drive one mile um, to and from a golf course. Right. So if you were playing golf you, and you had your own personal golf cart, you could drive to and from playing golf. In 1996, that was amended to remove that limitation. Um, in 1997, the village council adopted the ordinance that you see, you know, in the backup. Pretty much, it's in the same composition as um, we have today. In 2009, there was um, a golf cart safety board that was created. There was extensive discussion. Um, in that during that board about different amendments <clears throat> and before this council and at the time there was a decision made um, not to tweak the ordinance um, underneath this state law the responsible government entity which is you have to make certain findings that golf carts can travel safely um, in general on streets within the village and as well as at night um, and that was done in 1997 and 2009 that reaffirmed that. Um, and there were some minor tweaks out of that board. But the thrust, what happened after 2009 and 10 was that um, the safety board recommended and which was followed through by this council were the Fernwood entrances that you see in the commercial establishments. Um, so, And between yeah. some of the establishments on Cranon, well, at least between 240 and the square, they put yes. in an opening. Um, I think that's probably the only one. Actually, now that I the, think about it. the idea was to, <clears throat> yeah. was the issue was you know trying. Although golf carts are not permitted on Crandon, 
except in limited circumstances, Correct. was to further try to limit limit people from having that. To wasn't that them. enacted in 2009, 2010? That was the that, 2010 the, the change. Cran they were never allowed in, in Cranon. I think it was clarified then. Um, That's what it was. There was one other intended between the gallery and the square, but it didn't happen. Right. That's right. That never happened. So, um, you know, I would tell you over the years, um, this law is, um, there's been a lot of questions surfaced on um, the state law on a, on a state level. Um, there's, you know, a, a handful of <clears throat> attorney general's opinions on it, as well as um, just, uh, it's not the clearest written law. Um, there's no cases that have interpreted the law. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're here today with, with this ordinance, and I know that Councilmember Sigarola had some questions. Um, and, you know, if you want to turn it over, we can do that now. Sure, go ahead. Basically, the reason I wanted to have this workshop is safety concerns primarily on Crandon Boulevard. Um, I'm okay with golf carts in the residential areas. I don't think that's a danger. But given the increase of population, given the increase of traffic, it's just a, a, a tragedy waiting to happen to continue to allow golf carts in, in the capacity they are now, at least, to be on Crandon Boulevard. Um, I recognize that there's going to have to be some exceptions made just because of the layout of the village, uh, permissible, so, so it'd be permissible for golf carts to travel on Crandon, specifically south of Seaview Drive where there's next to no traffic uh, and there's no other way of crossing the island, golf carts will probably have to be allowed. Um, some, uh, s there's going to have to be some allowance to cross Crandon Boulevard. Um, and maybe given the exits to places such as Key Colony, there's going to have to be some sort of allowable path to get out of Key Colony, back to Fernwood or, or anywhere else. There, there's going to have to be some sort of traveling on Crandon Boulevard, but I think the focus should be on minimizing the traveling on Crandon Boulevard by golf carts. Um, I think we put our police department maybe in an, uh, an impossible position by asking them to enforce an ordinance um, it, it's to me, it's pretty clear, but I could also understand given everything that they have to do to throw on them following golf carts, see how many blocks they drive, uh, probably unfair to, to have them do that. So my focus with this workshop would be, I would like to figure out a way to minimize golf cart travel on Crandon Boulevard as much as possible. It, it's, it's a, it's an extremely important dire safety situation that one day there's going to be an accident and then it's going to be too late we know there's a problem we've all seen it uh, kids on golf carts kids uh, minors without child seats on golf carts no seat belts no triangles pick pick a problem we've seen it all um golf carts traveling in the left lane of Crandon boulevard which they're specifically not allowed and it happens on a daily basis holding back traffic you got to six seven eight thousand pound suv behind a golf cart with four kids on it traveling at 10 15 miles an hour they, it, there's going to be a problem so that's that's what i like um, to address one thing i'd like to mention um and i'm not advocating for this but i just want you guys to be aware that <clears throat> a couple years ago the legislature did amend not this golf cart statute but another statute that actually allows government to um put to allow for the golf carts to travel on sidewalks if they can go up to a certain maximum speed, which sounds kind of crazy, yeah. but um, I get it. But in this circumstance, there might be a way um, with not a separation of, of pedestrians. I'm just saying if, if because of the Cranon issue, I'm just saying, I just want to let you guys know that that's, I, I, I think that'd probably be worse okay. than what we have. Well, going on I, I'm not, again, I said I wasn't advocating. I just want you guys to know yeah, okay, no, that no, it came in the same vein with electric scooters and all that other stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for electric scooters, that, frankly. So. And hey, I would even see a way of, uh, I, I don't even know. I, I don't know the law on if it would be legal, but for golf carts to use the bike lanes, but, Number one, I don't know if it's legal. And number two, golf carts are generally wider than the, than the golf lane. Yeah. So that'd be another problem altogether. So, well, in any event, I just wanted you guys to be aware that that there, I don't know why they made that change. Some, obviously there was some communities that want to do that, but um, I'm not aware of any that are doing that. Right. 
I mean, I, I, look, I agree. We have to find a resolution to this issue because you see them all the time. I, I have a golf, I have a golf cart. I come off Ocean Lane Drive and I generally make the left and go to my office, which is four buildings up. Um, but if we if we make something that prohibits, but I agree with you. Key Colony people need it. People going to the library need it. People going to um, what is it? Citibank. You know, I, I I've been thinking about this because Citibank. You can't get into Citibank unless you come out on Crandon Boulevard and come in. Um, you can't get into the square. Well, you can get into the square. You can't get into Galleria unless you come. Uh, well, no, you can come in the back way on Galleria. Through Farmwood. Um, right. You can't go to the. Um, the How do you get to the Strip? The what? How do you get to Fernwood? That's well at the Galleria. There's a back entrance. At uh, at 240, there's a back entrance. At 180, there's a back entrance. Um, the uh, what do we call the strip where um, where Domino's and Subway and everybody is? That the that arcade. Arcade. the arcade. Thank you. The arcade doesn't have access. Um, I have seen people do the drive on the sidewalks. But I, I, I am nervous about that creating a, 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 a situation. You talk about life. I mean, this is life safety. Yeah. I, I think this is when – I, when I see people do that, I, I try to prevent them from To be doing clear, that. that's not permitted today. I'm just saying that that can be – Okay. Well, no, but but I, I'm just saying I have seen people do it, and it's dangerous. I've seen people use their golf carts in a way – You know, one at one minute, they want to be – a motorized vehicle using the roads, but then the next they want to be on the sidewalks and they want to cut across things. They don't want to follow the traffic laws that cars have to. And I think we have to make sure that I, I think a lot of this is enforcement. I, I, I would like to hear a solution for Crandon because I think there's maybe we don't allow it going southbound on Crandon from the Galleria to, um, to McIntyre. I have a question, actually. Okay. Given the fact that Crandon does not belong to us, it belongs to the county, what is our ability to put any sort of markings either on the road or signage next to the road? Uh, uh, technically, all traffic signage has to be approved by the county, by the county anyways. Okay. Um, but we would have to get the county's consent. Because um, yeah. what I, what I f foresee some version of the solution being limiting travel, golf cart travel on Crandon, across the board, starting off with that, and then looking at it on a map holistically, seeing what is necessary. And once we figure out whatever path is necessary just by our layout, Got it. maybe having some sort of striping on the street, for example, where it's easy for a golf cart driver to say, okay, I'm allowed to be here until there. I don't know, yellow, green, purple, pick a color, and have these paths drawn out on Crandon so it's clear where they can travel and where they cannot. And, and then it's dummy proof. Yeah. But, I, but, <laughs> um, but in a sense, I mean, not, not the way it is, but do we have a system in place that really does limit travel on Crandon? It just isn't enforced. What concerns me, or enough, what concerns me about adding, like, no southbound past the gallery, the more complicated you make it, the harder it is for people to remember, to understand. Right now, we have a very simple rule. No more than one block on Crandon Boulevard. You're told that when you register your golf cart, we try, perhaps we could step it up, but we try occasionally to put out communication as to the rules of golf carts. And clearly, the best way to communicate it is through enforcement. And once people get pulled over and slowed down and can't get to where they're going in such a rush that they needed to go down Crandon, the message gets out there. But when you really start to complicate it with, well, you can go northbound because you need to get in Holiday Colony, but you can't go southbound because the Village Green is really long, I think it becomes really difficult to, for people to understand what the rules are. We do have a system, and we do have a rule. The problem is everyone ignores it. So it's not a system or a rule. It's just de facto non-existent. But they're like, then they'll just continue to ignore. Well, it, I disagree. And the, the, the only way to try to make the current rule work is to basically turn the police department to golf cart nannies. And I, I don't particularly want to do that. So if we're not going to, if we have an unworkable rule, we have to change it to make it something that is workable. And then that's where the sol analyzing the problem 
and marking off, demarcating wherever a golf cart could travel and making it clear on the road, preferably on the road if it's a stripe or something like that. Maybe next to, next to the bike lane, have a stripe that says or, or marks out for, for golf cart users where golf carts are allowed on Crandon. And if there's a golf cart outside of the area where that stripe is, then that's it. It's very simple for the police or anyone else to say, okay, you're breaking the, the law or the ordinance. So it, it, we do have a rule, but it's not working. It hasn't been working for 10, 11 years or more, however long the ordinance has been in place. And because it's not working and because everyone ignores it, there's gonna be a problem one day. But your premise is that it's not working because people ignore it. Correct. But also your premise includes the notion that it's also I'll say prospectively unsafe. Uh, golf carts on Crandon? Yes. I I absolutely believe that. Yes. And you and that and your premise is because of the confluence between F SUVs and golf carts a, and the speed differential. Correct. And, and the proposition the, that someone all of a sudden is crossing, so there'll be a sudden stoppage when the lights blink, and there'll be a. And if there's a collision between a regular vehicle, even a, a sedan, and a golf cart with no sides. No real bumpers, no, no one wearing seatbelts. That's going to be a problem. It's similar to a bike collision, but it's correct. But a, a bike, there at least there's a bike lane. If we would, it, I guess my solution is similar to, to that answer. Having golf cart, not lanes, but golf cart zones. And yeah, I mean, what seems intuitive. I would say devil's advocate that I recognize the incipient danger that you're describing. By and large, um, I think people try to stay off of Crandon. They use the curb cuts in Fernwood as best they can. But, and the reason that people take the sidewalks, for example, is to get to the curb cuts in the back of right. Fernwood. I, I think that's right. But my concern, <clears throat> I, I mean, I am concerned about the over, I, I see a lot of people on Crandon go beyond or are in the left lane. I think the left lane's a bad one. I think people, they, they jam it up. I, I think it's an enforcement. I got pulled over one time driving on Crandon past, past the Village Green. They, they pulled me over and you know it was at night, I was going, it was pouring rain and I was doing that. I'm late to pick up Mia at the community center or something and I just pull, and the rollers went up and I got pulled over and you know I got my little, I got my warning and, and I, I don't drive down Crandon on 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 the southbound side by the uh, by the by the Village Green, um, yeah. so I think there's a combination. I understand I, I, if you've got a solution that you think works that we can that we can enact that that's better and easier because I, I do agree with Allison on the point that you know the more rules we put in place that we're not enforcing. Is it making it better or is it just making it more confusing? Because then people throw up their hands and they say, "Oh, I didn't understand what you were talking about." I, I would, my solution would be doing away with the current or, ordinance of the restriction on, on Crandon, just taking that out. And f for example, putting a paragraph that says, golf carts are allowed on Crandon, only where marked by whatever system we, we figure out. And then figure out if we can mark up Crandon Boulevard to some degree from the county. Yeah, so uh, technically, in order to allow the golf carts on Crandon, we would have to allow, we'd have to go to the county, I think. Right. Okay. Um, but maybe the solution would be, you know, the golf cart safety committee when, or board, when they <clears throat> developed those capital improvements, I think they were a big success yeah. um, on Fernwood. And maybe some of the direction should be for a capital, you know, to look for another capital improvement project like that. Um, to kind of what Ignacio is saying, that the staff can examine to see if there is like a feasibility. Um, I, but I completely agree. <clears throat> Part of the solution would be moving golf cart traffic to from Crandon to Fernwood and having access to every shopping center or, or whatever from behind through, through Fernwood. It would, it would help to connect between the Galleria and the square yeah. as had been originally intended? I think the square is the more difficult one because there is no, there's no access from Fernwood to the square. You have to go through 240. That's the only access point you have to get to, um, to, get that, to the that, square. That could Fernwood. be an, an engineering solution in itself. Uh, I, uh, that's definitely going to be a big well, part of it. And maybe some kind of connection between the square and the Galleria. Yeah, that's what I'm um, Right. I think that, um, you know, with the arcade, there's the issue of a pretty substantial grade differential. 
I know the owner of the arcade really desperately wanted yes. the golf cart entrance in the back and had to be satisfied with the steps. But of course, right at the bottom of the steps on Fernwood are huge signs that say no parking. Right. However, there's space there on the swale. Maybe that's an engineering consideration we could look at, that if you want to go to Pita Pockets or Domino's, you could perhaps have golf cart parking on the swale there on Fernwood. Um, the concerns that I have with the demarcation and additional signage is that we're in the process of evaluating our sign pollution on Crandon in an effort to make it more safe. Yeah. And adding more stuff there worries me about not just our residents, but on the weekends when you have people coming in to go to build bags who aren't familiar with the community and aren't familiar with our signage, getting more confused. And then there's flashing lights and there's kids crossing. And I don't want to make one situation that we're trying to fix worse by fixing another one. I agree. I, I'm not interested in additional signs being put up on the road. I think the easier solution would be, and a cleaner, more aesthetic solution would be a marking on the road itself. That would be my preference. So the only people that would really be aware of it would be golf cart drivers that understand what the laws are and residents. The, the outsiders that come visit the, the beaches or, or whatnot, it would not really call their attention and it would not be an, act, an additional pole with a sign with anything flashing on it. That, that's, that's my preference. I, I, I agree I don't want additional signs on, on Crandon Boulevard. That would just be more clutter. And I'll tell you, in the um, golf cart communities I've been in, that's how they do it. They put a little golf cart on the ground, and that's how you do it. They don't actually have a or physical. like a golf cart with a red thing through it, yeah. you know, that says yeah. you can't Those go down. Yeah. Like wherever, wherever right. the golf cart zone ends, you put. There's a big, yeah, you can't, you yeah. The X on a golf cart. Look, I'm fine with that. Could I, I propose that in the short term, we try to do, I know that our police are doing a big amp up right now with the cyclists and are probably stretched a little thin as a result. But if we could at least look at what would it mean to really increase enforcement in a focused manner, the way we did with juvenile behavioral offenses, if we call it that, and now with the cyclists through Crandon Park and on the causeway, that maybe through a concerted effort of, at least in the short term, while we sort out what our other options are, a concerted effort to increase communication about what the rules are, which clearly we still need, because I still see you know 14-year-olds driving golf carts, not as often, but you still see it, and mm -hmm. with respect to where they're allowed to be, and maybe make it a combination of communication and enforcement, and see how it it ripples through the community and where we're at at that point. And while we're while we're at that, um, you know, maybe we ask the manager to ask Jake to look at road dimension and what opportunities might be available. Sure. No, because I think that's. I, I mean, I would like if you could do something sort of. You know, I like having the bike lane for cyclists. I think that's it is an important thing to have because we have a lot of people in this town, not the <clears> Peloton, <throat> but people who just like to ride. And I like them having a safe space on Crandon to ride. Um, but if we could figure something out to allow for golf carts as well, I think that would be great. I, and, I, and one last thought on the legislative side. It seems timely uh, maybe to update findings. Would you, yeah, would we, you recommend we, that we, we could do, do that? that if we bring back the ordinance? We can. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I want to bring back the ordinance until we have something to legislate. Yeah. And at present, would, we have ideas, but not legislation. I would agree that our findings would be more flowerful than we typically would. Be, because I read this while we were talking. We, I don't think, have adequately supported our own ordinance, arguably. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what occurred in 1997, but, um, you know, it, in other words, it may not be codified, but... It's easy for us to take that step because we've had this discussion fully. Yeah. So we could we could do that. I would say step number one, at least for what I'm thinking about, would be if our attorney could communicate with the county and find out if they will allow us to put any sort of yeah, golf no, cart. I, I asked for public comments. Yeah, absolutely. Any... Raise your hand. Uh -huh. Oh, is that your hand? Oh, that, yeah, there you are. You're, you're moving. Oh. Right. Oh, any sort of yeah. golf cart. That, that striping that you discussed. Got it. 
if they'll allow that. And what I figure is we, we keep a, a bike lane clean, and then next to the bike lane, the sort whatever golf cart marking we can do, and also clarifying that the golf carts has to stay in the right lane, not the left lane, for any distance that we deem necessary. Got it. We do have some people who are calling in, literally, in my phone. Um, Pete, can you uh, put the message out? I, I understand there's some hands raised out there. Mr. Don, no one signed up to speak. Um, Don, what, what, what's Don's? Uh, Don literally just called in and said I wanted, he raised his hand. Um, so do you have a number there ending in 298? There he is, right there. Yes, Mr. All right, Don, unmute yourself. Or have Pete do it. Or Pete, unmute two nine eight. Pete, can you do it? Can you unmute him, Pete? I'm sorry, I don't have the ability to unmute them from my end. Okay. It's on star six to unmute your telephone. Ed, you got anything to say? Yeah, that's perfect. Keep yourself muted while you speak. You're muted, Ed. You're muted, Ed, which is the way I like you, but there you go. There you go. You're good. You're unmuted. I'm only concerned about number one. I'm unmuted. Yes, you're good. Can you hear me? Okay, fine. Uh, what I mean, what bothers me is the fact that we have an inspection every year, which to me is make work. It provides absolutely, it provides absolutely nothing, except keep the police busy doing nothing. We don't inspect cars, so why in the hell are we inspecting golf carts on a regular basis? I understand initially to make sure they comply, but after that, if they don't comply, the police can give them a ticket. So I think that's a waste of our time, waste of the time of all the residents who have golf carts. It makes absolutely no sense. The second thing is, which might be controversial, I think we <laughs> left us hanging. That was a that was a cliffhanger. You'll have to come back next week for the next episode. Um, Ed, can we get Ed back? No. Well, I can't Say it again, Ed. You you block you 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 froze. We lost you at controversial. Yeah, that's not good. Ed, that's no good. No, he's gone. Um, all right, Don, can you unmute yourself? Star six on your phone. Calling him now. <clears throat> Just gonna. So, oh, I've been selected to get a, a reward from AT and T. Um. Okay. So, what's the action item coming out of here? I, you know. So we'll inquire about signage. We'll. You know, if, if Jake can help look at some engineering possibilities, which I assume means reutilizing the swales in some respects. Right. Um, we'll look at the findings that we adopted in, in a, a long time ago and see whether they need some freshening. Um, and I think we also talked about better enforcement, you know, better advice to, as to what the rules are. Um, encourage people to get off of Crandon 
And I'd love to look at the uh, curb cut situation at the arcade, which is a solution waiting for a solution. I think the ramping and the use of the swale is easy. And uh, <clears throat> between the gallery and the square, it seems like a, it's an easy opportunity. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I forget what happened back then. It was I think 2010. It was, you know, the, they couldn't, the, the respective owners had a little bit right. of a problem. Is, is there anything that could be done to encourage any commercial centers to open up, have more openings through Fernwood? And with which, building and zoning, maybe? I, I think it benefits the commercial centers. Right. Yes. I think, yeah, absolutely. It allows I traffic. Think, I don't think they're opposed to it. Yeah. 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 I think we could do something to that. <laughs> Maybe we have to check our charter provision that limits us from doing stuff in the zoning, but um, but we can definitely try um, if we can do that. Yeah, to creating some allowances or something. Yeah, I mean, I remember the discussion back then. They all really wanted it. The village paid for right all for that. the cuts, <clears throat> um, and I think we even had to do like we might, might. I think we might. I gotta look and see if we had an easement or whatever it might be, or there was some agreement between the parties to allow for it. And issue variances if necessary. Yeah, well, getting it done wasn't difficult. I mean, no. it, it, it was it was a very it was a straightforward. I don't think there were any hiccups in that. Well, the, the, I think the, the one hiccup was between the square and Galleria. They couldn't come to an agreement. The right. one we were talking about was kind of an issue. Yeah. So I guess the, the bigger it, it's it's overcome, but the bigger impediment was the residents. They, yeah. they worried about um, an oppressive presence of squadrons of golf carts. On, on Fernwood. Right. That, that's not, this is a kind of a traditional NIMBY thing, and it just hasn't been it borne out. It hasn't occurred. I mean, everybody uses Fernwood or, or Yeah, Lonely. I think any opposition like that would now, people would feel better. I think so, too. So, and clearly the idea of trying to get as much I think, golf I think cart Don, traffic as Don, possible. are you on? Crandon is a good thing. Yep. We know we're all ready. Oh, Nancy's there. Nancy's there, so that means Don's there. I can hear you. She was... Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. Okay, can you hear Don? Just a minute. I can hear Nancy. All right, can you hear me now? I can hear Don. Put Nancy on. Okay, you got me. All right. <laughs> you get her in a minute. Just uh, state your name and address for the record, uh, please. Yes. My name is Donald Ellisberg. I live at 177 Ocean Lane Drive. Uh, Perfect. That's all we needed. Keep this game. And I'm, I'm also a golf cart owner and driver. Okay. Right? Now, I, I wish to know, number one, is the chief of police with you tonight? Yes. All right. This is very simple. Uh, everything you've had to say today in terms of the statute and the uh, 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 up and down uh, uh, ocean uh, uh, channel and so forth, it's all useful and important to remember. But I think the answer to this one is in two or three items that are what's terrifying people and causing the, the real, the most irritation. And that is number one, you've got uh, kids, kids riding the bikes, riding the, the uh, <clears throat> carts who are underage and, and, and number one, or number two, unlicensed if they're overage. And, uh, and 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 second, uh, nobody is wearing seatbelts. Those uh, and, and overloading oh, cards, the, right. the, the, the cards. If those three were to be addressed aggressively, uh, you would have a lot less uh, noise in the system of golf carts. And I think, in all fairness to uh, uh, our former uh, chief of police, who uh, was my dear friend and I love dearly, he simply was not prepared to enforce it at the level that the city council demanded. And they screwed around with it, screwed around with it, but it still didn't happen. And until it happens, however it's done, uh, we're going to have the same troubles. Uh, it's not a question of can you drive through 240 over to the, the the next lane and so forth, 
that that's that's the least of our problems. I think the problem is is making sure that the people who who drive these things, uh, particularly uh, uh, by the way, a lot of adults I have no uh, no sense of what they're doing, or have uh, for all I know have licenses or seat belts or anything else. But it, the point is, it's the passengers in these vehicles uh, that are causing the, the problems, and that's what I would think you ought to address your time with. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Um, yeah, I, I think it. Oh, hey, Nancy. I'd like to. I'd like to add a few things to what Don said. Okay. In the past, I was told that when police stopped kids who were uh, road raging with each other, or not licensed or not wearing seatbelts. The parents thought it was a joke when they went, the police went to the home to report what was going on. So that needs to be added to the, um, to whether, whatever enforcement it is that we're going to decide as a village is the enforcement, whether, what the penalties are going to be for the violations, how many warning violations, how many, uh, when do the real violations start, and what is the penalty for it. And I would certainly consider that if a child is reported several times as driving with one of the offenses, then the parents get fined. Um, and maybe their ability to drive a golf cart is taken away. But unless, unless we start enforcing right. and following through with the enforcing, everything that you're saying is very nice, but people are going to totally ignore it. All right. Thank you. Um, I just okay. want to address something that Nancy said. It's my understanding that we've heard here a few times that the penalty if you are cited for driving a golf cart underage unlicensed <clears throat> is your parents do get a fine and the child is ineligible to get a driver's license until they're 18 years old. And I know that we have had <clears throat> issues in the past where it's uncomfortable for police when they go to a child's house and say, you know, your kid had the drive the golf cart and that they, I guess the pol most polite way to say it would be they don't feel they're they are supported by the parents, but rather that they are attacked. sometimes <laughs> attacked and that, you know, how could you do this to my kid kind of thing? And I've said this before. I said it many times to Chief Press. I'd like to say to our new police chief that I, for one, 100 percent support the police in enforcing this. And I have only one licensed driver and two other teenagers in my house and I really hope they're not stupid enough to take the golf cart as I say this, but if it's my kid, they also should face the consequences. Like, you have my complete and total support to enforce this. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to the kids in the golf cart. It's dangerous to everyone else on the road. And this is a rule that we've put in place, and when people register their golf cart, they're informed of it. So... I agree. I, I'm 100% I'm like in support add, of that. Go ahead, Brett. I'd like to add also to... Um, to uh, Councilmember McCormick, it's and back. I brought this up before, that I think would be extremely effective, but the parents won't take this as a joke. We don't have to <laughs> go as the 18 year old license on the first round, but um, impounding off the island golf carts when they're caught doing this would, would make it extremely inconvenient for the parents to uh, parent better because having to get your golf cart from somewhere off the island <clears> is. Expensive, it's difficult, and it will definitely, uh, it will definitely make people more aware of what their kids are doing in their own house. Agreed. Ed, are you back? Do you want to say you were you were bringing up something controversial? Vice Mayor London. He's frozen again. Oh, he's frozen again. All right, never mind. We're going to move on. All right. So the direction right now to staff. Actually, Mr. Before we. I just realized we haven't asked if the manager or the police chief have any input, any opinions they want to throw away or 
if not, I don't want to put you on the spot if you have nothing to say yeah. or anything you'd like guys would like to add or as specific, I guess, with enforcement, what's good, what's bad, what's easy, <clears throat> what's not doable. Right. Yeah, I'll, let, I'll let Chief speak first, and then I've got some things I'd like to add after he speaks. Okay. <clears throat> good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, so in reviewing this in the short amount of time I've been here, I, I understand that this is a controversial topic to the village and uh like you in my short amount of time here i have seen some of the violations that you've described here and there has to be a balance but one of the things that i can tell you that makes it very difficult for the officers is the penalty enforcement section which is something that we really have to take a look at with chad because i think if we're going for a youth engagement strategy approach here and be collaborative in educating and getting youth to be on our side there's a fine line between collaboration and enforcement, right? Obviously, enforcement gets the message across, but we also want our youth to collaborate and engage with our officers. Uh, in saying that, though, there has to be a mutual respect, right? And the respect has to come not only from the youth, but from the parents who are in charge of, of, of the youth. I think that if we sit down with the manager and, and the, uh, the, city the village attorney, we can figure out a, a collaborative way to do that. Um, whether it be through the village ordinances where we can impose a fine, I think kind of, I think council member Moss was going that route where it makes it difficult, right? Uh, so you don't have to go right away for the losing your license until you're 18, but maybe we impose a, an, an ordinance, a fine. Uh, we can impound the golf cart. Uh, we can restrict their permit where they lose their permit for six months. So I think there's some creative ways that we can go ahead and do this and, and obviously we can instruct the officers, myself and Deputy Chief Yunus, we can instruct our, our officers to step up our education and enforcement because they have to go hand in hand. You're, you're only gonna get so many warnings and I myself have seen the, the children on the golf carts and the, the lack of regard for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A historical note, if I might, <coughs> this goes back a number of years, but we had asked the police chief to engage with the families kind of along the lines that you just alluded to, uh, an attempt at collaboration. And this is where Council Member McCormick's memory may intersect with what had happened. The report back was that a number of families basically showed them the door. And so that didn't work. That's not to say that you give up on that effort, but that's what happened. I agree. And just because something didn't work the first time doesn't mean you don't try a second time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. No disrespect to the former chief, but there's a new chief, new voice, new energy, uh, and hopefully we can get that collaboration. And if it's not there, then we move on to the next step. But they can't say that we didn't hold true right. to our end of the bargain, where we're trying to forge these relationships, we're trying to engage our youth, because they are the future. Yeah. And I do agree with Council Member Sigarola. I think the last thing anybody in this room wants to see is an accident, because it can be catastrophic, just as you indicated the cyclists, the golf carts, they're the same thing. And, uh, you know, we want to prevent that from happening as much as we can. And, and I think if we're able to educate and inform, then we move on if they don't want to listen and we go to the next steps. But we can say that we took proactive steps to engage and collaborate. Yeah. Well, thank you. No, I, 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 I agree. Um, I was going to say something, but if you want to jump in, go right ahead. <clears throat> Yes, I was thinking about what was being spoken about earlier as well, and on the, um, on the Cranman Boulevard, you know, if somebody's using it for one block, and I know that for, as, you know, for a solution that we have right now, and I stepped out of the meeting for a few minutes, so if you guys already spoke about something like this, I apologize, but we would need an immediate solution that we would have to look at, and there's still obviously properties that you cannot access unless you go on Cranman, and our ordinance says that you're allowed to go one block. I think it is an education. I think we need to get the information out to all the people so that they better understand what the consequences if they don't. Um, me personally, walking, driving down Cranon, it's not usually the issue of somebody hops on Cranon for one block and gets off. It's usually the issue that the person's going from one end of Cranon to the other, slowing everybody down. And I think that's the inconvenience. But I think that we also have to look at an education campaign. Uh, to remind people how they're supposed to behave in, and what the law is on Crandon as well. Yeah, but no, I, I appreciate. Yeah, it, it's got to be, it's got to be carrot and stick. 
You know, I mean, let, let's try and work with folks and let's get them to comply. But at the end of the day, yeah, I think giving the police more more options as far as how they're going to deal with this, if it is impounding, if it is if it is, you know, a warning and impounding and then, you know, going to the uh, to taking away their license until they're 18, um, whatever it is, whatever you guys want, that's what we should be given. Because I, I, I agree with uh, Councilmember McCormick. We need we all need to support what you're doing. And, and I, I do. And I'm assuming everybody up here does. So, Mr. Manager, do you have something to say? Yeah, I'd like to add. I, I, so what I'm hearing, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at about four, <clears throat> four part parts of trying to get to solving this issue. Um, one, of course, is the ordinance. Let's make sure we have that right. Number one, make sure it is what we want. And number two, make sure it's enforceable. Um, the other part is the program, that educational, that engagement program that we want to do to make sure that we're working with the children, make sure we're working with the parents. The third part, and we plan to bring this to you at the next council meeting, is how do we address Cranon Boulevard? Because it isn't just it isn't just the golf carts. It's the bikes. It's the scooters. It's the motorized bikes. It's the people walking across, not looking at cars when they come across. It's the lighting. It's the signs. We got a problem with that thing, and every day I'm worried that we're going to lose somebody out there. So that's something we're going to bring to you all on uh, the next council meeting, and what we'll do is we'll add some of these issues into that scope of work um, so that our consultant can give us a recommendation of the design going forward. But in the meantime, we can also look at some short-term solutions, what we can do on the boulevard itself, but also take a look at some of those curb cuts. And, and those are some things that we can address just ourselves without having you know a big design on, on Crandon. And obviously, there's a lot of institutional knowledge on this council. I could reach out to you all for recommendation. I know Jake has some things. He and I are texting right now. Um, so those are the four things that I see that I think we can do moving forward. Um, and obviously, there's a bigger part to each one of those, but if there's anything else that you all recommend that we can move forward with. It's a good summary for me. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I think, but, but let's get moving. Let's let's try and get these items. You're going to come back on the 16th with some things, <clears throat> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move it along as fast as possible. Hey, Chad, do you think you can get a, an answer from the county by the 16th on the marking up? Uh, Even if start the preliminaries. I mean, I, I think so. Um, I think that I'll have to get with Jake too, because I think, you know, one is going to be working with the public works and other with the, the attorneys there. So yep. I'll jump on it tomorrow. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll go, we'll reach out, we'll reach out to public works. So he's exactly, there's going to be two different directions. We got to go on that one. All right. Great. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thanks Thank everybody. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right. All right. Let's uh, call it an evening. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you all.